good. So I'm gonna do the wiring now. So me the diesel here. Um, basically, got to do the ground, the positive. Um, I'm gonna get rid of the inline fuse that's on there and put in a sensible inline fuse. And what I mean by that, you get this, which is a glass fuse. Now, if you're away in the middle of nowhere or you're at a campsite and you, it blows for whatever reason, go to the camp store, the, the shop on site, and you see if you can get a glass fuse. You ain't going to be able to. Um, but you can get loads of the normal um, normal car fuses. So I'm going to put in a fuse holder, um, which it takes normal car fuses. Now this is a 20 amp fuse in there. Um, so I'm just going to replace it with a 20 amp blade fuse in the blade, blade you know, the holder. Um, yeah, I have no idea why they do why they do something like that, but it's obviously cheap cheaper to make for them, isn't it? So yeah, so I've got a, I'm limited really on where I can put the controller because um, obviously you only get that much space, uh, length, plus I've got it under my seat and it's going through the cupboard, the back of the, the cupboard and coming out of the front here. Um, so that there. So that, that, I don't know if I can show you any better. Dark is, lighting's terrible. But this is what happens when you just grab time whenever you can. Um, yeah, so really it's sort of, what I'm thinking, let's take the light off of me a minute, is go in up under here. So what I'm thinking is obviously with TV, I'm just thinking about drilling the hole here so the cables can come through, just mounting it on there. Um, it's up out of the way. Uh, I'm also going to wire in, so there's a diesel heater there, look. I know i got to clean under there, don't worry. It's not fixed in final yet. Um, I'm also on um, the display. You've got three wires there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to see whether that is just solely a 12 volt feed to the LCD display. Um, if it is, If it is, then I'm just going to wire in a switch, a toggle switch. So this will go out, go in the back of it, through the cupboard, and next to it there'll be a switch, an on and off master switch for this LCD display. Um, I don't want it lit up all the time. I think they're quite bright. So, uh, yeah, anyway, let's all get right, to sorry. it. Some people out there now Probably screaming and shouting at the screen, saying, Solder it. You should solder it. Well, I'm not soldering it, so stop shouting at the screen. So, that's on there now, that's joined. These ones uh, I've actually got, I don't know if you can see that, but it's built in, uh, built in heat shrink either side. So just uh, warm it with a bit of 
orange wobbly stuff. Oh, it's part of the flame is at the top. Don't worry, I've taken the uh, fire, whoa, taken the fire extinguisher out of the van. So that ain't gonna, yeah, I have here. So that ain't gonna go off. Right, job done. Now this side, um, which should be the side that goes to the battery, I'm just going to super glue it on onto the terminal. I am joking. I'm going to use a the spanky wanky doofer. I'm going to use. Oh man, I always forget. Just start chopping stuff all over the place. It's stuck in the carpet and all sorts. Now, what I'm going to do with. Oh, you sod. What I'm going to do with this. Is I've just trimmed it. Fold it over a bit more so that when I push it into the connector and it actually bites down onto it and I uh, crimp it. I don't know if you can see that, but it eases it and pushes it out the end. Now, I totally agree. Them yellow things are crap. So just to neaten it all up a bit. I don't know if I've got not that one. Just to neaten it up a little bit, I'm gonna stick. Oh, I don't know if I've got any. A bit of heat shrink on. Bear with, just, ah, you sod. I always wear gloves. Got a boo-boo. So yeah, today we went to, um, it's quiet at the moment, but absolutely chucked it down early on. And we were out in the uh, middle of nowhere in some woods. The kids loved it, I loved it, the dog was a nut job, the missus, not too keen. But, uh, hence why I'm doing this now at night, well of an evening, because it's the only sort of spare time I've got to do it. Um, but, I don't, I don't mind. Gets me out of the, um, gets me out of anything else. So, if you can, I don't know, uh, there we go. This, um, it's got different types of this. This is just plastic conduit. Um, flexible, uh, it's got a slit down one side, um, you thread, thread the cable into it, different systems in your van, just to neaten it up, um, what I tend to do is use this, so I've got it on my light system, so all my lighting wires inside the van go down one, um, the sink goes down one, um, the leisure battery again is, is in one, so the main split charge feed going through is in one, the heater 
obviously don't know if you can see that that is in one it's just gives it an added bit of protection from chafing um but also like for instance my the lighting system i've got about 20 different wires to my down lighters and my cabinet lights and that so having them all sprawled everywhere a bit of a pig so stick them all inside of there they're all in one area and uh you can always put like a bit of um tape around them a white insulation tape and then just write on them lights you know this that and other uh yeah so now now Again, because it's the ground cable on this, um, the loom for the Chinese heater, it's quite short. I don't want to go extending it to take it to the battery or, but, or the main ground. I mean, ground it on anything as long as it's grounded off. Um, so what I'm going to do... Is I'm going to use this bolt here and do that nut stick the tail line over it and use that as my grounding point um yeah but obviously camera's in the way so i'll switch it off do it and bring you back in a minute slide on your connector and slide it further on along kink the end over if you can see that a little hook eye type thing slide the connector up and then what happens is when you pull it down and in it bites in nice and secure so when you go in crimp it up you know you're crimping enough on there right my little tip and today's tip brought to you by Rusty. There you go. Heat shrink makes it look all nice and pretty. Nice and pretty. Right, so I'm gonna get this connected up. The earth, the positive, negative, sorry. Um Oh, my lights just died. Gonna get the negative connected up. Gonna get the negative connected up. Um, and then the positive connected up. And then... Well, actually, first and foremost, I have to figure out on that switch, won't I? Yeah, let me just get all this connected up a bit. Back in it. So... I mounted it just there. Uh, it's actually held on by Velcro and whatnot at the moment, so I get some little grub screws for it. Um, this annoys me, and they all seem to do it. Uh, the sheathing don't quite go up, so you get a colour there, but I'm going to get some paint just touch with that. Scrape mark there. Um, I'm going to be sticking a little switch next to it, an on-off toggle switch, just to kill the power to the LCD. So that doesn't light up constantly. Um, my thought behind putting it there as well. I mean, if for whatever, if for whatever reason I don't get on with it there, I can take it off and I can always just use that hole that's there and put a 12 volt power outlet in it. So, yeah. Excuse the old uh, cohort. So, safety first. Axle stand. This just to lift it up. Get under there. Undo the um, under tray on one side. The side tray. Drop the tank, drill a hole, bang the fuel line in there, bang it all back together. Turn the heater on, drop down. 
behind the trail here got this just need to undo just that one screw and then from the top put it sort of down and out and once you've got that off once you only take cap off you've got a breather hose and then buried at the back there turn my nut undo it and it comes floppy jalopy right so it's down got to get this pump off so i'll take this pipe at the back which is the black one this blue one off i've already flipped them off again get that one off and it's a bit tight and then the connector and hopefully it dropped down a bit more so i can then get this off and just lift the pump out it's a bit tight <laughs> I don't want it to come off the uh, jack because it might be a bit of a pain in the ass to get it back in on the jack. So, see how it goes. So, got it out, drilled a hole on top there, traced it down to there. The float sits lower than the actual end of the pipe, so it shouldn't never suck the tank dry. So, yeah, chuck all back together now. It's done. It's all plumbed up. Um, I'll take you underneath and show you. Ooh. So, if you can see there, that's the pump. Um, the fuel line, it's a bit dark, sorry. Uh, comes on the tank where the blue and the black pipe line goes next to it space for the fuel line the heater line to um clip into it space so almost neat so it comes to there just before that can you see it's a bit too dark is um fuel filler what i've done I come from the pump um so it comes from the pump of the hose in which i ignore those i'll get a proper clip to join that pipe and that pipe, hold it together. It goes, this is just fuel hose, which I've used as an outer sheath. This fuel line runs inside it. Posted it through the um, chassis valve there. And it pops out the other side somewhere. I then feed the fuel line up to the diesel heater. The exhaust is all bolted in. Don't have to drill a hole. So it's actually a pre-made hole there, so I've just not bolted it. I've got to uh, trim that panel, put the um, silencer muffler thingy majigger on. Uh, the air intake goes underneath. You can see where I've just held it in place for that for now until I make a bracket. So it's actually the other side of that heat shield. Um, I mean, my heat shield battered and mangled anyway so I don't really give a give a who about poking a hole in it but yeah so it isn't on ramps it isn't jacked up it's on the whole job um so it can be done without a ramp so don't listen to all these people say you need to put it on a ramp you need to go on up in the air about a meter you don't this tank is probably about that thick at the most um, yeah, so I'd say it's all plugged in now. I have to pop out, so going for a social distancing walk, so I can't um, spark it up yet. But I'll fire the thing up there, yeah. yeah. Just one jack jacked up the front, axle stand. And that's it. That's the gap. So I did put sealant around where the fuel line goes into the actual um, sender unit. So yeah, that's it. So heat is installed, smashed under the seat. The fuel lines, control cables, Everything is all in. 
So what I need to do now is uh, prime the pump, prime the system, and fire it up. You don't have to have it on a ramp. It makes it easier if you could get it on a ramp or over a pit, but again, most of us are sat at home and trying to do it and save a few bobs. So I've just done it to show you all and prove to you all it can be done. Um, prepare to get dirty. Um, prepare to get dirty because all load of crud and all sorts is stashed up on site at the top of the tank. Um, yeah. So when you put that locker ring back on where the um, for, uh, what's it called? Sender tank. Sender, um, fuel sender. Make sure you put that ring back on tight. Um, it's a bedoddle. You know, I think I had the tank dropped within half an hour. But, um, just want to make sure I root all the pipes correctly and, you know. So, hmm. Next stop, testing it. 